So this is a presentation about uh, how to take care of yourself in the spring and starting with some tips about nutrition and the role of the liver and uh, doing kind of cleansing activities at this time of year to avoid problems with allergies. And then we're going to move on to talking about some homeopathic remedies that in case you do get allergies, you are able to um, take care of yourself with some homeopathy. So in five element theory, uh, spring is associated with the wood element. And we can understand that because at, in springtime, flowers are coming into bloom and sprouts are coming up and it's, there's a lot of greenery and growth and uh, we can see uh, plants just taking off like crazy, um, coming out of hibernation and going into, you know, a very active phase. And so as a, as a human being, it's really good to stay in harmony with what's going on in the environment. And some of the good things to do are to start getting up earlier, rise with the sun, in the winter, we kind of all want to hibernate like bears and just kind of withdraw our energy inward and sleep more and eat heavy foods. And our system gets a little bit sluggish during the winter. But then in the spring, it's really time to reverse that whole, uh, that whole process and wake up. So rising early, waking up. Um, often we want to eat lighter foods, um, more uh, raw foods or foods that are less highly cooked and maybe, um, increase green foods like vegetables and decrease heavier fatty foods. Um, so um, the organ that is associated with spring um, and the forces of spring, this is a, uh, this is a uh, um, quote over here from a Chinese classic. Uh, please mute yourself, Sharika or any, everybody else, so that, thank you. Um, the supernatural forces of spring create wind in heaven and wood on the earth, and in the body, they create the liver and the tendons, and they create the green color. So these are some associations with spring, and this is why cleansing in the liver is so important um, in the spring. So uh, what's happening outside is snow is melting and the rivers are getting all full and muddy. And what happens internally is the kapha, if we're using the Ayurvedic term, or, you know, the kind of sludgy stuff inside us that we've been holding on to all winter, starts to melt as our energy comes up and we need to cleanse it um, from our systems along with all the toxins that have accumulated by the sluggishness. So it's a very important time of year for planting the seeds of health, so to speak. Um, in uh, the lunar calendar, this is the time, this is the new year. The lunar calendar actually starts at this time of year. And it's very interesting that um, the plum trees are always just coming into bloom at the lunar new year. And suddenly, you know, early spring is here. And that's really the reminder that it's time to start uh, doing some spring cleanup, so to speak. So it's a time of personal energy renewal, a time of renewing one's health, um, and releasing all of the sluggishness uh, that has accumulated over the winter. Uh, so sleeping less, waking up early, as I said, and lighter foods, um, and the bitter flavor, which is associated um, with uh, digestion. So springtime is liver time, as I had said uh, on the previous slide, and I'll just go into a little more detail here. Um, so uh, the liver is the largest organ in the body, and it's the most complex, and it is involved in so many functions um, in the body. Uh, in Chinese medicine, the eyes and the tendons are also associated with the liver. The flavor that is associated with the liver is sour. So this is where sour, um, sour foods like uh, lemons and lemon, lemon water can be really, really uh, good for the liver. 
The emotion associated with the liver is anger and irritability. So if your liver is out of balance, this is some of what might happen is, is irritability and anger. It is the organ that is most affected by excess stress and emotions. So, you know, get, having going through things, having hassles with people or feeling too stressed out, it, it affects your liver very strongly. So these are obviously things to try to avoid in the springtime, of course, all, all the time, but especially in the springtime when the liver energy is really important. So the liver performs over 500 different functions in the body, including fighting off an infection, neutralizing toxins, making proteins and hormones, controlling blood sugar, um, and helping uh, to clot the blood. So it's just an amazing organ. It's also the only organ that can actually regenerate itself. So it has amazing qualities and um, we can see its association with the spring, which is a time of regeneration. So we really want to regenerate our liver um, during uh, the springtime. At any one time, it contains about 10% of the blood in the body and pumps a one and a quarter liters, that's like about a quart and a half uh, per minute through your body. So it's a very, very um, active organ. And it processes everything that we eat and drink and either repackages it for the body to use or eliminates it. So the liver is constantly getting rid of stuff and then making things uh, useful for the body. So it's got a huge role. It's the biggest, as I said, the biggest organ of the body. And spring is the time to regenerate the liver and take care of your liver. So if we don't take care of our liver um, and some of the signs of a liver being out of balance include getting frustrated and angry easily, um, stressed out, uh, being impulsive with emotions. Uh, the eyes can be very inflamed and there can be other kinds of eye problems. There can also be hormonal menstrual problems in women uh, and skin problems and especially allergies like hay fever. So um, reacting, getting reactive, just like uh, on an emotional level, getting irritable and angry is emotional reactivity and allergies are uh, reactivity of our respiratory system um, for the same kind of reasons, getting our respiratory system, our membranes getting irritated um, by things coming from the outside. So there's this direct connection and why, you know, to avoid springtime allergies, doing these kinds of cleanses before everything goes into full bloom is really a good idea. Uh, the liver also um, is connected with tendon and eye problems, as I had mentioned earlier. So um, this irritated eyes or having musculoskeletal um, inflammation can sometimes be connected with the liver as well. So this is why it's so important you know, to take care of our liver and uh, get out of this cycle of reactivity. One of the good things to do uh, to help the liver um, and detoxify is uh, to drink this uh, cleansing tea that I'm giving you the recipe for. You can go online and pay a lot more money uh, by uh, getting it already pre-made, but it's really easy to make yourself. Um, it's made of some spices that are just really super good for digestion, and it tastes really yummy too. Uh, you can just get some cumin, whole cumin seed, whole coriander seed, whole fennel seed. And if you can find it, there's um, a seed called ajwain, in, um, which is used in Indian cuisine. It's kind of similar to cumin, uh, but it's very good for digestion. The uh, Western name for it is bishop's weed, but it's just another little seed that looks kind of like cumin or fennel. Um, and if you can get some, if you're near an Indian market, uh, that's a good one to add, but it's not necessary. And then uh, ginger. Uh, either fresh or dried. I talked last presentation that I did about the differences between fresh ginger and dry ginger. Um, and uh, whichever is more convenient for you, you can use. Uh, and if you want to use dry ginger, then you'll have all of your spices all mixed together, just equal parts of all those uh, seeds and spices. And then you can just uh, 
put a teaspoon or so with a cup of boiling water and infuse it and then uh, drink it or make a pot of it. I like to make a pot of it and uh, drink that all day. If you like, you can add lemon or stevia to it um, for, to give it some sweetness and some lemon to give it a little bit of that sour quality. So this is uh, a nice recipe for something you can uh, drink a lot of during the day to wake up your digestive fire because all of these uh, all of these spices are very, very good for digestion and they'll help, uh, it'll help your body to digest things better and then be able to uh, cleanse. A very healing food that's great uh, to start eating in the spring if you're not already are mung beans. Uh, they have a lot of really good qualities they uh, clear heat and toxins from the body. They balance the organs and the skin. They tonify your chi, improve circulation through all the channels of the body. This is information from Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine. Um, and not only is it popular in Chinese medicine, but in Ayurveda, of course, um, mung, what's called mung dal, which is uh, when you take the mung bean and you split it in half and take off the skin. Uh, so there are really a couple of forms, and I'll be giving you a recipe in a moment that you can use with either form, either the whole mung bean, which you can very easily sprout, or, um, or the split mung dal, which you can uh, get in health food stores or Indian stores. Uh, those are two ways you can, you can uh, eat them. <clears throat> the sprouts, you can even make uh, your own mung bean sprouts and add to salads or just lightly steam them but I am going to give you a, a recipe, a special healing recipe to use them as well. They are anti-inflammatory. So all of that irritability that I talked about in terms of an unbalanced liver, they help to calm down inflammation and they are cooling in general. So it, it's good, especially if you tend to run cool to go to eat them with um, warming spices rather than just by themselves. So it's very easy to sprout mung beans. What you can do is just take, um, a jar and put maybe a quarter cup of mung beans in the bottom and uh, add some um, clean water to that some spring water some water that doesn't have or some filtered water that you know it's good to use water that uh, doesn't have any chlorine in it and then uh, let it sit for about 12 hours and you'll see that the mung beans really expand quite a bit and then from then on you can just rinse them once or twice a day and you'll see that very quickly within a day or two they'll start to produce little sprouts and if you let them go too far they'll end up you'll end up with really big mung bean sprouts like the kind you get when you go to a Chinese restaurant that are really long sprouts but you can also eat them when they've just begun to sprout when they still look like a little bean with a little white thing sticking out um, that's probably a better way to eat them um, if you're going to make the kind of uh, recipe that I'm going to suggest uh, on the next page. So uh, sprouted mung beans are a wonderful food for the spring. So cooking with pungent flavors in the spring is great. Um, all these different kinds of spices, we already talked about a few, um, but also different kinds of um, pepper, like black pepper or chilies, cayenne pepper, um, and also onions and garlic are helpful in the spring because they kind of, again, wake up the system and kind of tonify the, the system. And turmeric, of course, is everybody's favorite spice these days. Uh, it's very, very popular, but many other spices uh, are also have tons of antioxidants, help you with your digestion. Um, they really all, are all healing foods and do wonderful things for you. And of course, the benefits of turmeric are more too numerous to mention. Um, but uh, in terms of what we're doing here, um, it's, it's definitely a liver cleansing uh, spice. So using it uh, in the spring is really great. It reignites the metabolism. It reinvigorates the blood. When I lived in Indonesia, we used to grate it um, 
we used to grate fresh root and then squeeze it and drink the juice and thought felt that it basically that we called it tamba dara which meant um <clears throat> strengthens the blood so uh, that was a folk use of it that we did in indonesia and it's usually best uh, to use it sparingly uh, like it is done in Indian cuisine. I've been seeing recipes online where people are saying, you know, use several tablespoons in a drink of golden milk and things like that. And I think that can be really over the top for some people because it's a very strong substance. So I would suggest, you know, just using it as it is used in Indian cuisine um, and use it frequently, but just use a little bit at a time. It contains oxalates, which can lead to kidney stone development. So that's one reason not to use it, uh, uh, use too much of it, if you, especially if you suffer from kidney stones. So here's the recipe that I wanted to share with you that kind of puts all of this together. Um, it's called kitchari, which is um, a healing, cleansing food that is made Usually in traditional Ayurvedic cuisine, it's made with basmati rice and mung bean and mung dal, which is those uh, split uh, mung beans that have the skin taken off that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, but um, you can also make a lower glycemic version of this. Instead of using basmati rice, you can use quinoa, you can use millet, you can use buckwheat. These are uh, three grains that are actually very alkalinizing to your body, which will help to reduce inflammation as well. Um, and they are also lower in the glycemic index. So they are better for keeping your blood sugar steady. Um, I myself don't do really great on rice. I find that my blood sugar just really spikes with rice. So. I tend to go with one of these combinations instead. Millet and buckwheat together make a perfect protein. So that's one really nice combination. Buckwheat's a little mushy when you cook it by itself, but it has tremendous antioxidants and is an amazing healing food. Um, so these are some options for grains. They're good grains to keep around, quinoa, millet, and buckwheat. Uh, they are the three grains that are alkalinizing as opposed to all the other grains which uh, um, make your body more acidic. So you can use a cup of one of these grains or a combination of them um, and then a cup of um, sprouted mung beans or else a half a cup of mung dal. So basically the proportion is uh, twice as much of the grain to half the amount of the lentil. However, if you're using the mung beans, they're all swollen up, so you can use a larger amount if you're using the actual sprouted mung beans. Uh, if you wanted to make this in a different way, instead of the mung dal, there are many other legumes that are used in um, Indian cuisine. Um, you could also use lentils, you could use uh, tur dal, which are pigeon peas. You could even use split peas. Regular old green split peas are another option. Uh, but mung dal does have a lot of healing qualities and is really good uh, legume to use at this time of year. So uh, again, there's a lot of options here, but that might be the best one to stick to. Uh, then you can put in some bay leaves, which also have a lot of healing and cleansing qualities. A cinnamon stick, four cloves, an inch of sliced fresh ginger, and six to eight cups of water, depending on whether you're using um, the sprouted mung beans or the mung dal, and also how thick or thin you want your kitchari to be. Uh, and then you put, and then you can add a teaspoon of turmeric to that. So what you're going to want to do is put all of that together and cook them until they're soft. Um, probably 45 minutes in most cases and if you use a pressure cooker take less time and then um, there's a technique which is very delicious and really I think helps with the bioavailability of um, all the goodies that are in are in the kitchery which is called tempering and what you do is tempering is basically taking um, an oil like ghee which is a very healing uh, oil or coconut oil 
um, about a tablespoon and a half for this recipe. You, won't, you heat it up on like a medium flame and then you put in a teaspoon of whole cumin seeds and kind of fry them in the oil. And when you start to smell the fragrance and they start to sizzle, you immediately pour that into the kitchery. And by adding that fat, and adding those toasted seeds, uh, the fat really increases the bioavailability of all of the spices. Um, they, everything gets into your system better when there's some fat involved. So this is the way that it's done in traditional Ayurvedic cuisine. And, uh, and it also tastes very delicious. It gives it a nice texture. Um, if this is going to be your main meal, another thing you can do is take um, cashews or almonds or I love my favorite is actually pumpkin seeds and add that, um, fry it in the ghee also take a few tablespoons of um, some kind of seeds to add protein and then uh, put those in as well and it gives it a little bit of a crunch so it's not all just complete mush. So this is uh, Kitchari is a cleansing food. People go on fasts just eating this kind of thing, kitchari. You can also chop up veggies and put vegetables right in the kitchari, or you can eat them with a salad. You can eat it with a salad, and it's a wonderful way to kind of clean your system and give your system a break because it's very easy to digest. I mean, if you add the pumpkin seeds and the cashews, it becomes a little heavier. But the traditional recipe with just the cumin seeds is very easy for your body to digest, really gives um, your whole body a break because it's just easy. Um, and the, and the, the spices also make it uh, very easy to digest. So traditionally, people would eat this for uh, several days or longer uh, to, to, to cleanse and to uh, be able to just have the digestive system really go back into order and give the liver a break, etc. I have a way that I like to make this. Um, I wrote here down at the bottom, steaming technique for one serving, uh, because I just cook for myself most of the time. And I find that if I cook these big amounts, it just lasts too long. Um, what I like to do is actually take a bowl and uh, put in about, I tried to measure it because I actually use my hand and just use um, a fistful. I use a fistful of mung dal um, and then I use two fistfuls of the grain and I put them into um, a bowl and then I rinse them off. Uh, and then I add some water so that maybe there's about, I don't know, an inch or so on top uh, so that it's just this bowl with the, with the raw rice, with the raw quinoa and mung dal in it. And then I put that bowl inside a steamer and steam it. Um, I do it inside a pressure cooker so it takes about 20 minutes. And in 20 minutes, it's uh, cooked. And then I just go ahead and uh, saute the seeds and put it right in there. And I have a single serving. It's difficult to cook a single serving um, in a pot because it's just, you know, most pots are way too big uh, to make a single serving. But if you ever want to make a single serving, um, and particularly if you have a pressure cooker, uh, to use your pressure cooker as a steamer. You can also do it without a pressure cooker. I just don't, I'm not sure of cooking times, but I do know that you could do it even on top of a rice cooker. Some rice cookers have like a, an insert that uh, is a steamer and you can do it that way. Or if you just have any kind of uh, steamer you can, that you could put a bowl inside. It's a very nice way to cook things. Um, and you can decide if you want a really soupy one uh, and add a lot of water, or if you want it to be a little drier and add less water. But either way, it's kitchery and it's very healing and is a great, a great uh, thing to make as a staple in your diet at this time of year. Greens, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, are also a wonderful food for this time of year. So um, either lightly steamed or raw if your system takes them. Uh, these are some dandelion greens over here. And uh, maybe you even have some growing in your yard. It would be nice to eat them instead of just pulling them up because they're great food. You can also buy them in the markets. Um, 
they're, they're a crop these days. And here I have nettles. Of course, nettles, you have to be really careful about harvesting them. Um, but they make a fantastic tea. They are so high in minerals. Wonderful for women with um, osteoporosis. I um, may have mentioned on a previous call, yeah, I was able to make a huge difference in my own bone density um, by drinking in a lot of nettle infusion. Um, basically a very strong nettle tea. So you can make tea out of nettles. Of course, if you're harvesting fresh nettles, you have to be very careful because they sting. But you can also buy dried nettles. And if you harvest fresh ones, you can make soup out of them. You can cook them. Um, once they're cooked, uh, the, the stingy part goes away. So uh, bitter is the flavor that really is good for the digestion. So um, any kind of bitter greens, uh, adding them <clears throat> to your diet and trying to eat a lot of them in the spring will be very, very good for your digestion as well. And a traditional way of supporting the liver is to have um, a cup of warm lemon water first thing in the morning. So if, uh, you know, hot or warm, depends on what you like, but if you can get a cup of uh, hot or warm water and squeeze half a lemon or so into it and have that be the first thing your body has, your liver will be very happy. So now we're going to move on to homeopathy and some remedies for hay fever and allergies uh, in case uh, these uh, tips are not working and you are getting some hay fever. These are some remedies. Homeopathy is very helpful um, with hay fever and allergies and uh, sometimes uh, even just a simple remedy can make a big difference from feeling very miserable to feeling good. So our favorite remedy in homeopathy for um, allergies is Allium Sipa, which is made from the onion. And if you think about what happens when you cut an onion, that's what Allium Sipa is good for. Um, lots of sneezing and clear watery nasal discharge uh, can include the watery eyes that you get from an onion. The discharge may burn, that just says bum, but it should say burn, <laughs> the nostrils and the upper lip. Uh, the symptoms may get worse when you're indoors or in a warm room or in the evening and may actually feel better from open air, which is unusual, of course, um, for allergies. But if it, you notice that they're better when you go outside and you have these symptoms, it might, you might need Allium Sipa. There may be a, a tickly throat and a dry, painful cough. And it's also good for colds that come on during wet weather. So the kind of weather we have where, you know, the spring is still, we're still having showers. Sometimes Allium Sipa could be a really good uh, remedy for that. So yeah, this is the most common of all the homeopathic remedies. It, it covers really the common symptoms of allergies. So for a lot of people, it is the best one to try first. Arsenicum is also a great remedy for allergies. There may be violent sneezing, a throbbing frontal headache, uh, a person who needs arsenicum uh, because it's, it's a remedy of many uses may um, may feel weak and chilly and the discharges may burn um, and there may be they may be better from heat the burning discharges may feel better when you put something hot on it which is what we call a strange rare and peculiar symptom of arsenicum and um, all of these remedies could be used for colds as well as allergies it doesn't we don't differentiate in homeopathy whether it's a cold or an allergy uh, the symptoms are pretty much the same, but if you get a cold that comes on from getting chilled when you're overheated and then you get too cold, this kind of thing that can happen with the weather changing so much, you know, it's hot and then hot during the day and then all of a sudden it gets chilly and you get chilled, uh, that could be arsenicum. Euphrasia is a fantastic remedy when your eyes are the thing that's really bothering you. Um, Euphrasia, uh, the common name is eye bright, and it just can be miraculous um, for those allergies where your eyes are just driving you crazy. There may also be sneezing as well, but the main symptom that we usually uh, think of Euphrasia for are when the eyes are very watery and irritated.
Nux vomica is very much of a livery type remedy. So this kind of remedy can come in a lot during the spring um, because it's uh, often a Nux vomica state comes on from overwork and an over, overworked uh, nervous system and getting very reactive to everything. Um, so if you're suffering from overwork and feeling irritable and sensitive um, and reactive, uh, Nux vomica, and if you're having allergy symptoms, Nux vomica may help. In terms of the allergy symptoms, there may be a dry, tickling, scraping sensations in the nose or sinus, and the nose is with Nux is stuffed up at night and runs during the day. And actually, Pulsatilla does the opposite. Um, in Pulsatilla, um, it's uh, stuffed up during the day and runs at night. So that's one way to differentiate. Um, I didn't go into Pulsatilla for allergies here, but if you have noticed that your nose is stuffy at night and runs during the day, then you could think about Nux. And then if it was the opposite, you could think about Pulsatilla. Dulcamara is a great remedy um, during this change of season because it, it really addresses colds and allergy symptoms that happen uh, during a change of weather, whether um, it's going from warm to cold or from dry to moist. And of course, in this sort of transition time of early spring, some days it feels, um, at least here in California, some days it feels like summer um, and the weather even gets up to 80 and then all of a sudden it'll get really cold and start raining again. So that's really a Dulcamara type of weather when the, um, when the weather just keeps changing up and down and especially if you get a uh, stuffy nose or an earache it also is good uh, for bladder infections uh, as well so um, there may be a sense of being better from warmth and having thick yellow mucus sabadilla is a remedy uh, that is fantastic for really violent um, allergies that are really, really bad. Uh, the eyelids may be red, the throat may be dry without any thirst, tickling in the nose that spreads all over the body. It's a really, really irritated form of allergies. And the kind of keynote of Sabadella is this itching of the soft palate, which for people that have it, it just kind of drives them crazy. Uh, this, and so if you ever get that, that itching of the top of your mouth, the soft palate, um, Sabadella would be a remedy to try. And a severe headache may be involved as well. And the final remedy I wanted to mention is Chylibichromicum, which is a fantastic remedy for the sinuses. And if you get allergies that have to do with sinus pressure and pain, um, then uh, that might be a really good remedy for you, especially if the discharge is very, very thick and ropey and difficult to get out uh, and really, really stuffed up and a lot of pain and pressure in your sinuses. Uh, Calibichromicum would be the indicated remedy. So I hope that uh, these tips are useful for you and that you're able to actually enjoy the season and the warmth and the flowers um, by uh, helping your body to come into balance with the seasons and using the homeopathic remedies uh, as indicated if you have any problems with allergies. So what I'd like to do now is just uh, open it up for questions and see if anybody has any questions. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and go back to this view. And I think I'm going to uh, let you, yeah, if one person, you just unmuted yourself. Uh, did you have a question or a comment? No, I just unmuted myself in case I had a question. In case you had a question, okay. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have a question? Okay. Well. Well, unfortunately, I missed the first part of your talk. Uh huh. Um, what remedies did you cover at the beginning? Um, at the beginning, I wasn't talking about remedies. I was actually talking about tips to kind of adjust to the season, 
Mm -hmm. So uh, I was going into the role of the liver and, and kind of how to some yeah. foods and things like that, but you can yeah. view it later. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was wanting to know. Uh, can I view that slideshow somehow, somehow later? I... Yeah. I'm going to upload it to YouTube. So yeah. To YouTube. Okay. And then how do I find that there? You're going to send a link or something? Yeah. Yeah. I'll send a link. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, th th does anybody else have a question? Hi, Willa. Hi. Hi, Azusena. Do you send a link to the um, Cadetus class or like everybody? I will. I will. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me. Any other questions? Okay.